Greetings Commanders, are you feeling a little overwhelmed with all of the back-to-back -back patches? Well, it's not stopping. And the October 8th patch notes are out, and while you are being dyed red, get ready for some new stuff. World 8 is coming. I know that most of you are not even through World 7 due to the event, but it's okay because it's not going anywhere. With the introduction of World 8, we are going to be getting a new place to farm the twin 127mm destroyer gun, and that is in 8-1. So that is nice for those of us who don't want to drop down and miss out on the purple plate drops while farming this. 8-2 will be dropping the 610 quad torp mount again, so if you haven't gotten your fill with the poi mines, here is another chance. 8-3 will be dropping the triple 155 bell gun. 8-4 will be the twin 203, which is one of the best CA guns in the game. So a lot of great gold drops are going to be coming out of World 8. And if you can finish off D3 in the current event, you should do okay in World 8. But that's not all. We are going to be getting a bunch of new ships, and one of them is Maya, who will be dropping out of 8-4. Maya is the next drop-only SSR, and this one is coming in the flavor of a heavy cruiser. Her skill, 10,000 Knights, couples a passive reload skill along with a 15-30% to 30 chance to fire off a double torp launch. So, that is pretty sick. Not only that, she also comes with a very low shot full barrage, so coupling that with her reload passive is going to be throwing down so much barrage damage. We will be getting a few other new ships, and by that I mean quite a few. Abakuma, Richmond, Nachi, who most of you likely have from the event already, Salt Lake City, Ikazushi, and Inazuma. We will also be getting the hard mode for chapter 5, which is nice because a lot of times I don't want to have to dip down to chapter 5 to farm gold gear normally, so this will give me a reason to clear out some chapter 5 missions daily for things like the quad bofer AA gun and the twin 127 DD gun. We will be getting some new retrofits as well. Furutaka, will be picking up the chain torpedo skill, giving her a 15-30% to 30 chance to fire off a second set of torps, not to mention that skin upgrade. Kako will be getting chain torp skill as well, and, dare I say, an even better skin upgrade than Furutaka. And then there is Abakuma who is a new drop-only ship in World 8, and yep, you guessed it, another Chain Torp upgrade. Her retrofit skin is absolutely adorable as well. Now, what I am super excited for is the Akashi mission. From day one, I have wanted this cute little shop cat in my dock. She comes with logistics maintenance, recovering 1-3% to of her max HP to the entire fleet. That is pretty beefy. She also increases your Vanguard reload by 5 to 15%. Yes, please. And comes with 1 to 3 emergency repairs. So at max logistics maintenance, with no gear, she will be healing the whole fleet for 105 hit points every 35 seconds. Now, I know that doesn't seem like a lot, but when stacked with lunch boxes on your front line and a few beefy HP items on her, this is going to be a game changer for hard content. The downside is, well, she really doesn't put out much damage. She does have two anti-air slots, but that's about it. Now, she does have a pretty long quest line. To start this, you are going to need to head pat her 30 times. After that, you need to collect 30 T1 auxiliary plates, then construct 10 ships. Then you're going to craft 5 pieces of equipment. Then you're going to scrap 10 pieces of equipment. Complete 10 expeditions. Complete the backyard daily quest 14 times. This is going to hold you up for at least 2 weeks. You can complete the torpedo daily mission A 3 times, then the torpedo daily mission B 3 times. The kamikaze raid daily 3 times. Then the boss raid daily three times, open up 10 purple Sakura Empire boxes, then five gold Sakura Empire boxes. You're going to then clear out map 8-4 one time, clear hard mode map 1-4 six times, then you're going to clear out any chapter 2, then 3, then 4, then 5 hard mode maps six times. After that, you are going to need to collect 11 paw prints, and these are going to be scattered various places around your menu 
and around the game. Now, after you get that, you are going to craft the Healing Cat's Paw and winner, winner, Akashi Dinner. And that is a lot of stuff. But I forgot to mention skins, because what patch would be complete without some skins? The swimsuit Akagi, Kaga, and Shigure skins are coming, so get ready to drop some gems. Now, it feels like they are just dropping so much stuff on us, and it is a tad overwhelming. I wish that they would give us just a little bit of breathing room here and not back-to-back -back and overlapping events. But thankfully, these things won't be going away, so make sure that you are focusing on the event and clearing this stuff out during your downtime. So let me know in the comments what you are most excited for in this patch. For me, it is hands down the Akashi quest line. That looks like it will take probably a minimum of three or four weeks, seeing as you will be blocked for two weeks at the Backyard Daily Missions. So Commanders, I hope that you are excited for this patch. We only have a few days left before this drops. And I hope that your event farming is going fantastic as well. I would like to take this opportunity to thank all the Patreons who make this channel possible. You guys are fantastic. If you would like to join them, there is a link down in the description. You can join to gain access to my behind the scenes pictures, scripts, polls, giveaways, and much, much more. But if you would like to support the channel, just hit that subscribe button, smash that bell notification, drop me a like and a comment, and I... We'll catch you next time. Take care, Commanders. Peace.